Tariq Trotter is best known as Black Thought. He is the extremely talented and thoughtful co-founder of The Roots, who are, of course, from Philly. The Grammy winner has earned a reputation as your favorite rapper's favorite rapper. That's right. Trotter's new memoir, The Upcycled Self, is out tomorrow. He spoke to CBS's Anthony Mason in New York and here in his hometown of Philadelphia about how music and art really gave him a crucial escape from a turbulent childhood. This was the first actual school of the arts that I attended. At 10 or 11, how did it feel to come here? It was otherworldly for me, and it always felt... Uh, you know, sort of like a, a sanctuary, yeah. a hidden gem. Cadillac needs space to roam. Where we had a fall, she don't know. Tariq Trotter is best known by his rap name, Black Thought. But before the lead MC for The Roots made music, he studied art. With me, I just, I, I don't decide. You know, yeah. the, the drawing decides. Yeah. Taking classes at Fleischer Art Memorial in South Philadelphia. You say in the book that art saved your life. Yes. Yeah, art, you know, has been my, my saving grace, my salvation. Yeah. Absolutely. The book is Trotter's new memoir, The Upcycled Self. I'm curious if you, whether you saw anything about yourself that surprised you while you were writing this. I mean, I think just the, the level of, uh, of resilience. Because I'm the definition of tragedy turned triumph. In the very first chapter, The Fire, Trotter begins, I burned down the family home when I was six years old. He was playing with a lighter. It was an accident. Your mom was, she was very forgiving about the fire. Oh, yes, my mother was super forgiving about the fire. Were you tougher on yourself than she was? Um, maybe, maybe I was. There was something lost in, in the fire that, you know, we would never be able to get back. What was lost? I think, uh, a certain, you know, innocence, a certain level of, of security. Young Tariq was swept up in Philly's new hip-hop culture. It was huge, and in it, I was given a voice. You know, so I saw myself, I heard myself. As a graffiti writer, the city became his canvas. Like, this is the original art. The original art is writing on the wall. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's carvings, it's writing, it's, you know, cave paintings, and, like, that's what this is. So when did you typically do this? Uh, under cover of darkness. Yeah. Yeah, at, at, at night. We would, you know, press our back against this one and, like, scale up as high as we can go yeah. on this and then, you know, hop on that thing. And it was, there was almost, you know, parkour yeah. involved. But, again, <laughs> stuff that I would never think about attempting now. What did doing graffiti mean to you at that time? It was the utmost form of uh, an expression of myself, of who I was. Did the fact that it was public mean something? I mean, it, it meant everything that it was public. It was the beginning of me uh, being able to tell my story. Of course, it was illegal. I got arrested at 12 and I was sentenced to, uh, I had 150 hours of what they call scrub times. He was drafted into the city's anti-graffiti network which would become the Mural Arts Program. So when did this go up? Um, this went up about two years ago. Open your head wide and let the thought inside. My style fortified by all of Philadelphia. Ironically, the graffiti artist now has his own mural. It feels awesome, but now in retrospect, I look at this image and I say, wow, I've lost a little bit of weight since that mural went up. Like, so how can, can I touch it up? Like, can we go up there and, you know, slim it down a little bit? Trotter credits his mother for encouraging the artist in him. But she became addicted to street life and was murdered in the crack epidemic of the 80s. To lose my mother um, in the way that I did at the time that I did, uh, it was it was my worst nightmare. What did you realize in that moment? Young Tariq, you know, came to to understand that um, you know you you can't you can't change everyone, you can't save everyone. But art would save him again. He found an unexpected collaborator in Amir Thompson, a musician who'd go by the name Questlove. And you were saying at one time Amir was down there and you were down here? Yeah, Amir was just a couple blocks away. They became like brothers. I think you say in the book that you and Amir are polar opposites. But, in many ways, yeah. yeah but you fascinated ways. each other. Yeah, absolutely. Well, opposites attract. Yeah. 
it's the roots. It felt like Amir and I evolved into a group by mutual silent agreement, he writes. The break for the roots came with an invitation to play a German music festival. They offered you a big check. I mean, you know, at, at the time, yeah, they offered us probably four grand, yeah. something like that, which was huge. What were you thinking at that moment? Um, we had made it, you know, yeah. our demo and, and what would become our first album yeah. um, were all related to that first gig. Here's the bonus the point of to make things see through. A walking institution. I'm an HBCU. As an artist, Trotter has been eternally restless. I wonder if that bottomless hunger, he asks, is still the hunger of a six year old kid, desperate to remake the idyllic world he'd burned to the ground. Does the hunger ever worry you? You know what I'm saying? No. No, the, the hunger doesn't it doesn't worry me, man. It's uh, it's all I know. They so hungry, rappers can't get no mercy. That's the reason any other one who spit won't first me. And Tariq Trotter says it's never let him down. I haven't failed myself yet. <laughs> you know, am I always at my best? No. You know? Um, but yeah, my worst is uh, is the next man's treasure. <laughs> Journalist, herbal eternalist, Olympic tournament level genius, author affirmative.